Welcome back, everyone, to the V4 Future Sports Festival. I'm Jason Kaplan, joined by the lovely, the handsome, phenomenal head of hair, mm, Tom Biz. The what? Chirpy. Yeah, he's very chirpy sometimes <laughs> uh, when the mood is right. But we have hmm. a, another fantastic map coming up. We have Nuke now between Virtus Pro and Tricked, where Tricked, who was down 10 to 5 in the first half, came back on a massive streak to actually win 16 that. to 14. 13, 13 to 5 after the pistol in the two following rounds. And they came back, held off strong, and they got revenge against Virtus Pro on a map they lost to them priorly in July. Yeah, I, I, in all honesty, that was a great comeback from Trick, but at the same time, you have to look at Virtus Pro and went, what happened? Yeah. Like, how did you not manage to even win? Like, a, like, if they won one or two rounds, they get to overtime as a minimum. I'm trying to think back. I mean, the like the one gun round they did win on CT side, a barrage was, a was off of Snacks as one v two, right? It was off of like an individual play. I think we saw Snatchy as well on the T side do some like great openings on a site. So again, individual yeah. play able to open up a site and lock things down. I, I want to say, and again, like take with a grain of salt, that we didn't see much coordination in terms of like hitting sites out of Virtus mm -hmm. Pro is more of like individual well, play when, oriented. When they were on the T side, I can at least give them credit for like. They, they were just doing like some fast setups, which seemed to work. Like that's how they got the majority of the rounds on right. the T side. Right. The T side was fine. Like I can't really take anything away from that. Like you had the pushes coming in from Snatchy and me, who I think they did a lot of the work. Veggie as well had a few moments, but it was mentioned on the desk. Snacks was really quiet, and he's almost supposed to be the all star in this team. Like he's the one with all of the experience. He's the one who was once one of the best players in the world. Like sure, me, who I would say like individually has always shown that he's got a lot of mm -hmm. talent. And snatchy as well, but you still look to snacks to get you out of these situations. Sure, there was the one 1v2, but at the same time, one of those players was low and the other one pushed him. So it's like, I'm not taking anything away from the clutch, but it wasn't like an amazing, like old snacks clutch where you got someone like Sadikis screaming about it. Yeah, it's it, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, okay, that's cool, that got them an extra round. But when it went on to the CT side, it, like he had a kill or two with the Mag 7, and that's all I remember from his whole half. And the rest of it was just that we had every other member of the T side in the form of Tricked playing well. Like, and I think the lowest fragger, excluding Hunden, had like 18 kills. Yeah, I think and so. And everybody else was above 24. Well, we're going to see Tricked Esports be on the T side to start things off on Nuke. Mihu going to be the one receiving the action towards ramp as Virtus Pro will be taking the CT side. And it looks like they might able to just rush him down straight into him. Mihu gets one. Forge from him, he's gonna be cleaned up quickly, and Veggie with the flank, able to take down once. So another down towards lower. Bomb, has been Bomb gonna be planted, and Virtus Pro still have four players alive here to pull this off. I do not see a kit though, unless Mihu was the one carrying it. No, and that's an important kill coming out from Bubski as well. He's managed to push aggressively, take down the one player who was behind them. Damage done, but now he's left all on his own. Low HP, and well, although PHR is the same, there's not too much he can do about that. Snacks will clear things up. It is going to be the round going the way of VP. But now I wonder if we see one of those early force buys again. We saw it before from Tricked. They went with a couple of MAC-10s, a Galil, some pistols, and a lot of utility. And on a map like Nuke, I can see that working well, especially if you go for like an upper rush. There's a lot of potential for them to do a lot of damage, especially when there's going to be SMGs and maybe some rifles you can also overwhelm on the other side. I don't really want to see them go anywhere near outside because I, I feel like you're asking to just be owned if you go in that direction when you don't really have the rifles available to mm -hmm. you. But we'll see what they do. Ramp could also be a, a pretty decent position to try and take. Well, Hunden's already started to set like a little bit of a precedent. Uh, precedent sorry, they needed the door the first round on the pistol. And I wonder if you're going to continue to do that to maybe keep, yeah, catch Virtus Pro off guard. Snatch, you're going to take down one with the scout from Heaven. Snacks, again, who was really quiet in the first map, able to get on the board. And relatively quick round here out of Virtus Pro. Same as last time, pretty much. Yep. <laughs> These rounds haven't been working too well for them thus far. But hey, I, I, can, I can appreciate the effort. They wait for the next round and they'll get themselves an AWP if they want it. That'll be something that going on to the CT side I really want to see because I think Acor definitely showed that at least in this matchup so far he was the better of the two AWPers. In fact, the majority of what I saw from Snatch he was with the rifle. Like he was doing really well with the AK when he was on the T side and then the AWP didn't really play a part in the match at all at that point. And it was when the Acor started getting it onto the T side that yeah. you sort of saw Snatchy fall off quite a bit. It seemed like he had his number quite a few times. Yeah, for sure. I can think of one in particular in towards Connector. Well, there was also there was one where um, he pushed out Ramp. 
and it seemed like Snatchy even knew exactly where he was going to be and still just headshot him through the corner of the box. Right. Flashbang's going in. They're going to rush out of Hut. Veggie's going to drop down for a quick two-piece. Backs away for third and gets the bomb down. And again, tricked. Only a couple of pistols bought up, so not really a heavy investment out of them at all. Ooh. It's going to be one kill. We saw us three to find. Great job by Virtus Pro. And I feel like the, the round prior, when Trick did hit upper, VP did use some great utility to actually delay the push to allow them time to get some sort of semblance of control over the chaos that was being thrown their way. I wonder if Popskin can do anything more. I, th I think he's just trying to maybe play with the heads of Virtus Pro a little bit and maybe try and bait them into pushing him. He's dropped a... Well, he's helped drop a couple of players, but in all honesty... This is still a good money-making round, although he gets a third. Now, this is starting to get a little bit ridiculous. Thankfully, Mihu will put him down, but that puts a bit of a dampener on the mood for Virtus Pro, because up until the point where he gets those two kills, there's four players staying alive. You've had a couple of clean rounds as well, and you're in a situation where you've built up an awful lot of money. Instead, okay, sure, you're going to go into this round with a stronger buy because you're not keeping all of the SMGs that you had, which is sometimes a problem when kicking off on the CT side. But you lose your bonus round and you lose a lot of the bonus cash that you had. Looks like we're having a uh, quick little tech pause come in. I think Snatcher did just disconnect from the server. So yeah. hopefully we get that sorted very, very quickly here. But I'm curious, will, will Accord be able to use an AWP on the T side here on Nuke? Will they... Will Virtus.pro even challenge him on the outside at all if he wants to go the direction? Is he going to try to play it towards ramp at all? Or is he just going to try to stay at run and gun? Because we haven't really seen any aggressive plays towards lower besides the pistol I'm talking about, using the vents to get down. You know, smoke and Molotov, or nade and Molotov and smoke off the door to get through. I'm, I'm more interested if he does pick it up, like where he will actually play. Because yeah, exactly. outside's the sort of obvious one. You do see a lot of players also having a setup where the door is opened up for them and they can sort of go for an aggressive peek mm -hmm. into a main at the beginning of the round. Other than that, there's the obvious one of ramp, but you're at an inherent disadvantage. And if, and to be honest, it's not really a gun that you necessarily need on the T side. Like if there is the necessary counter, then sure. but. There's a lot of sort of brute force fast plays that work quite effectively on the T side of Nuke. And I think that's something that can be a bit more problematic for teams is that when you do have the AWP, you sort of slow your play down. And a lot of the time, that really does play into the hands of the CT side because they're more than willing to sort of burn that clock down and take their time. Mm -hmm. We're going to see. It's actually going to reconnect back in. Looking at the yeah, stats of late, Virtus Pro, 43% win rate on Nuke. Tricked, 86%. <laughs> you, say, you say of late. If you looked at stats within the last three months, there would be none. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless they played it in that series versus Avangar, which I don't know. You can have a look. But yeah, they, they just haven't played. Like For VP, mm -hmm. it's, it's really difficult <laughs> to actually gauge where they currently are as a team because statistically, we, we have very, very little. As said, they played that one series in ECS, which they did reasonably well against Avangar, who've been a team to beat at this moment in time. But yeah, they, they didn't play Nuke. They played Mirage, Dust 2, and Inferno. So, And they actually beat Avangar on Mirage. That was the only map they managed to take, which isn't the best of signs when you look at how the previous map just went. At the same time, though, you're, you're still in a situation where you've started things off strong on your CT side. Okay, the last round, although you won it, was a little bit of a blip. But now they come in, Veggie just bought a P90. Now that's, that's interesting. Was that intentional? Because like, you I'm see like so. shotguns and stuff played yeah. around uh, on the hut, but I, I don't think you see many people play P90, main, mainly because it's a pile of trash. Tell me how you really feel about it, Tom. <laughs> well, let's see where he goes with it then. Looks like he's actually going to be just... Yeah, so, I mean, we saw him using the SMG above hut before in prior rounds. Now he's actually going to be inside the hut with the P90. So, again, trying to play up close and personal. Rack up some money. Oh, Mihu. I don't think he sees the bomb go down, but he gets a clean kill into Hunden. And the flashbang comes through. Vega goes. And he gets one and gets away as well. No, he almost did. Lipsky's going to drop him. And, of course, we are going to see him with the SG trying to watch out towards outside. I'm just really wondering, though, if Virtus Pro is even going to really bother to keep much attention in that direction. 
Because it maybe put th uh, someone in through secret. I like this from Snacks. He's, he's slowly sneaking his way through, like gaining extra information that they can't be on the outside. They are going to go pushing in and they're already getting one, but it is just going to be traded back. The T's do have the opportunity now to get themselves the bomb plant. They've got to be careful from the rafters, but Snatchy can't really take the risk here. And these are definitely the two players I'd want to have in this clutch situation. Like, Bobski's been the star performer for this trick side so far, or the majority of it on the T side as well. The question is, is there a way back into this round for VP? He's going to come to Shush, and he gets one, and he gets the second as well. Snacks left to himself, not really able to pull off a 1v2 here with 15 seconds left, but he's going to sure as hell try, rushes straight through the smoke, directly into the side, and Shush, he gets his fourth of the round. And Trick, more importantly, get their first round here on the T side of Nuke. Yeah, that is a big, big round to win as well. Sure, you have some extra money on to Mihu, but just the, the finances for VP are kind of weird. Like, you've got two players with enough money to fully purchase, and then the rest are in a bit of a dicey situation. Tease themselves definitely not got the best finances available, but they have got the AWP onto Acor. So you did sort of ask whether or not we're going to be seeing that weapon coming in on the T side, and the answer is yes. Veggie even going to be in with the XM as well. That's something I like to see. He had a five on three, by the way, out of yeah. uh, versus five. I mean, technically, it was more of like a four versus three because Veggie did die almost immediately after getting that kill. But to be able to pull that off on Nuke and to be able to hit that upper site with no contestion because they just walked in, put a smoke in towards main, and then just planted the bomb. This time, they do poise for a lot of ramp control. And Virtus Pro have gifted this over, dropping two players down in towards lower. As you're saying before, the the weaponry a little bit a little bit off. The XM for Veggie, MP9 for Snatchy. I know your eyes are trained towards a certain player. Ooh. And hopefully it was fear because he gets himself too. Yeah, that's an important double kill as well. If he just gets traded out there, then obviously the man advantage sticks with Tricked. Uh, XM unfortunately doesn't do anything. Now I'm going to be able to get the bomb down relatively comfortably. Now they're isn't currently a kit for the CT side unless there was one drop. They've got a lot of utility, but Snacks is already gone. And, well, they need to try and catch his player out, but Bubsky just doing the damage turns it on to just me who alone, and he doesn't have a whole lot of time to get back into this site and start that defusal shush. Just going to be playing up close, and Acor's just watching to try and back up his teammate. But the fact is, the time has ticked surely far too long, and, well, eventually Mihu just goes down to the AWP anyway. So the AWP, I mean... Yeah, he got two kills, but it wasn't effective necessarily because they were already in the site when they actually got the op pushed up towards heaven. And then he got a kill on to Snacks, who was trying to actually shoot him through the floor. And then he gets a second as he's trying to you know, obviously peek around to, to get towards the bomb. So it wasn't necessarily effective in that round, in the lit, in the us, but yeah, there you go. There's a shot through the floor through the grate. But they were able to get in the site nonetheless. Like, that's the important part. Without him really being there to, to get any kills, any entries, which was so pivotal in Trick's success on Mirage on T's side. I think that's a good sign for Trick, and now we see a push come in. Just a rush down with pistols, and Bob's gonna get a quick triple. Yeah, already off to a strong start now. Like, we saw the CT side, at least initially, doing quite well. Earning some money, but the break back early on, and that 2v3 clutch that they managed to close out. Has definitely helped them out, and that's, that's the big thing for Trick. It seems like in a lot of these clutch situations, they've been the one winning things through. Like, you've had big plays coming out from Shush. You've had the same from Bubski as well <laughs> throughout both maps. This was a little bit lucky. Obviously, the, <laughs> can't actually see the players he's shooting at, but even still. But you're telling me the players don't see X-Ray. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. Mavers Pro back on the buy. Utility again, very lacking, you can see. And Snacks, who previously did try to make a play towards Outer, gets shut down off the bat. So, man advantage back towards Tricked. This is a scary thing, I feel like. If, if they get on a roll like they were on T side of Mirage. <laughs> he just played Veggie so well there. I like these sort of plays that come out from Bubski. He, he's basically. What I would say one of the most annoying players to play against. Me, you, however, he's just gone ham. He just got four kills out of nowhere. Like, that was a disgusting round from him. We spoke about his skill ceiling. Is he going to get caught reloading? He will. A little bit of bad luck, and now it's Shush's turn to try and get them back into this one. Now, he does still have control of the bomb. And both players are split. 
question is, can he get himself the plant and maybe set up for that clutch situation? I don't think there's anything they can really do about this unless they go for a random spray through the smoke. And again, we don't have any kits. For this side, Ooh. what a shot from Shush as well. Leaves it into the one versus one. It's fear to try and turn this back. Doesn't even know where his opponent is, and what a clutch. One versus three to close things out. Gets a 3k in the end, takes the round. That was so well done by him, considering me who had such a, a god play. Taking on four players in lower. And the position he was in as well, having to look at so many different angles. Switches over to the fence last second. And the thing is, I, I know not to talked about before. We saw the 1v2 against Snacks on Mirage, right? They didn't peak at the same time. They didn't, they kind of like missed some, some timings. Communication maybe lacking there, but that communication is not going to matter for hitting shots like me who was... Yeah, no, he just, oh no, I think Acor may have missed his shot completely because when they did actually peak at exactly the same time, so it was Bobski peeking out with yeah. the Mac 10, yeah. and then Acor just seemed to stand there. So I, I think he just missed his AWP shot, and that gave Miho an extra kill. But even still, it set up Shush to then, well, just ruin them. Like that, that, That's got to be so painful, like especially for Miho there. You got to kind of think. Well, what more do you want me to? Well, I suppose ace. Yeah, what more can I do? <laughs> it's like, I'll ace the round, then, guys. Don't worry. That's what it takes. Look at those. Shush, eleven kills. Bubski at ten. Yeah, they got five nades in this round. I think that's just going to be the the dunk towards outer, and well, really didn't do that much. It, it's the most hit and miss strategy in the game. Just like, sure, if you catch every single player, then you may be able to steal a round away, or you just spent fifteen hundred dollars on nothing. At least they will go for a uh, boost up here. Try to stack towards the ramp. I don't know, Trick, like, Bubski and Shush have really been impressing me so far. I mean, of course, I can't really knock either. This on Mirage, he was able to open up and play so confidently. And as an AWP peer, like, that's that's not easy to do. And when you're able to play confident and you feel like the moment is right, I mean, start to take some really big rounds. And I really wonder, will Virtus Pro be able to, to stop the rot here, losing four straight? Not been able to lock down control of inner. We haven't seen too much ramp pressure out of Trick. Just a pissed around play and obviously a spray down when we saw an eco out of Virtus Pro. Yeah, they've been able to gain quite a lot of map control fairly easily thus far in this game. And I, I, I think one of the bigger problems is the teams I've seen beat Bobski on this map have been able to stop him getting down vents. Now, I know that it didn't play the biggest part in the round that they just lost, but him being able to get down vents and then sort of bait out a player or two is really problematic. And he's going to continue to try and do that for the whole map. Like, he really does like just playing around that vent area. You may even see him pick up a Mac 10 in rounds where he has the money to buy a rifle, just because it is part of their set strategy when they're going to be playing towards the B site. So definitely something worth looking out for. Me, who actually still has the orb, but thankfully... Rose is going to be able to stop anything more from that. On that note about Bubsky and Vents, I wonder if that's why we're seeing Hunden generally nade out the door every round. Yeah, kind of for sure, like for sure. Keep Virtus Pro having to wander and really invest utility to stop someone from rushing through. Even though if they're not going to commit for it, you have Acor who can follow it up with an AWP, as you mentioned, taking over towards Mame. Or you got Bubsky maybe rush down Vents with a Mac 10 to catch yeah. him off guard. Well, they'll so. nade and smoke it a lot of the time. Yeah. Just so then, like, even if. It, it's more the knowledge. Like, if, if he does go down there, he can hold off rotations. If he doesn't, they're going to be thinking he's there anyway. Right. <laughs> Just seen a single player could hit those shots. But Virtus Pro, they do have the buy up again. Snatch you with the AWP. And again, we need to start seeing them pick up some kills. I mean, Tricked have already proven they can win 3v5. They can win 1v2s, or 1v3s, I guess I should say. Yeah, again, a, a slow start for Snacks as well. And Snatchy as well, like, he's, these are not the two players you want to be seeing at the bottom of the board at the moment for Virtus Pro. We are going to see some late outer control taken. The smoke's falling. A lot of utility has to be expended to gain that portion of the map. And actually, the incendiary perfectly timed out from Mihu to at least slow them a little bit more. 
Bobski almost managing to catch one out. They've even put a player in the vent just to stop him being able to get this control, but it could be more of a problem. They're now sat above it. The bombs made its way into the A side, but Snacks and Snatchy, the two players are highlighted, have now stepped up to the table. Oh, what a shot out of Ekor. Fortunately, it was only one. Now Roach can be by himself. And finally, Virtus Pro do take a round after losing the last five straight. But as you know, as we've been talking about in the last round alone, like the, the vents position, Virtus Pro is starting to keep a lot of people, or not a lot of people, keeping a person inside vent, keeping people watching that direction because they know how effective Upski can be. But luckily for the side of Tricked, money shouldn't be too big of a problem. Actually, I say that, but you can see here on the replay that they have a couple of players still low on on money, low, low on funds. So at least Virtus Pro has been able to take a couple of kills in the rounds they've been losing. And this isn't the best to buy at all here for Tricked, even after winning five rounds straight. Even still, though, it's going to be that old pick. And that, that's the difference. That's the switch up I'm talking about. Like, you can either have him going for that opening pick with the AWP, or you can have the push down. Snatchy, though, will be able to turn one back. And Shush, only with the Deagle. He's, he's the last person I want to see with the pistol at the moment. He's leading the server in frags. Snatchy should get this kill, but he doesn't. He misses the shot. And now they're going to try and double back up above him. Around the oh. corner goes Acor as well. Another important pick. They expected Veggie to be there. Fear was there in the previous round, so understandable. That's like the third time I think at least he's used that position. He's had the, the, the MP9 there. He's had the P90 there we saw in a, round or a couple rounds before. Yeah, I think there's been someone there almost every yeah. single round, like either him or Fear. Again, we talked about missed shots. You know, if, if the core misses that shot, who knows what could have happened when it did in the round where Mihu got four, you know, it maybe would have prevented the 1v3 from happening. It would have made things a little bit more realistic. We can see Virtus Pro. Again, no money for themselves either. You do have snacks on a 4.5k, but just trying to save these weapons, especially the AWP out of Snatchy. And Snacks is able to get one here. Should have been a lock them down. And, and to be fair, like this isn't a bad call considering the economy out of Tricked was lackluster in this round. They had a couple of people on pistols. This is not a bad call here out of VP. Yeah, save your money. Confirm that you can get a buyback into the next round. And they even take an extra player down, which the T side economy is not anything crazy at this point in time. The only real worry, though, is the fact that Tricked have already got six rounds on the T side. Like, they, they could easily win it out from here on the CT side, although it's definitely not as much of a death sentence as it used to be. It, it's still one of those maps where once a team starts racking up the T rounds, you do start to get a little bit worried in these sort of scenarios. But we are going to have a, a CT tactical pause. A bit of time taken from Virtus Pro. They have got a ridiculous amount of cash. They've also got an AK and an SG saved onto the CT side, which is always going to be beneficial. Like That's sort of the only real risk that people talk about with the SG at, the, at this point in time, buying it on the T side, is you might hand it over to your opponents. Snatchy also managing to retain his AWP, so go back into the round. It's going to be 6-4 to four in favor of Tricked. It's still a reasonable amount of money now for the CT side. Like They'd still be able to buy into the next round anyway just based off loss bonus alone. Again, the door is going to get naded down. It's almost forcing a player just to hold hold main every single time. That Molotov miss. And so did that one. <laughs> that, that's back-to-back -back Molotovs thrown by the CT side, which just did absolutely nothing. One a little bit too deep, the other just landing in a smoke. And we saw Mihu perform some heroics. Now, this is a position where the SG is kind of filthy, and I, I think that they knew that. They're going to force Snacks back off the angle. Is he going to get caught with a nade in his hand? They run around the corner, and he does a little bit of damage, but he's already removed from that lower B site. There is still another player here, Mihu, just watching towards the doors, but they expect his position. Shush is on fire at the moment. His second kill in the round. There is at least a trade back from Virtus Pro, but is this even worth going for? Like a retake on the B site when you're a man down? I don't think so. No, they're already looking to save. you mentioned it perfectly shush shush being on fire like he has been not only here on nuke been playing well but even on the map prior on mirage he's been able to hit so many crucial shots
so many crucial kills at, at pivotal points, and I think everyone in general on Trick is playing well. I mean, we, we can talk about Shush and Akor and Bubski, but like Hunden's calling has been phenomenal. When we look back to Mirage, he's been able to read into Virtus Pro really well and also keep the composure of the team, really letting his experience flow through them. And now 7 to 4 on T side of Nuke for Tricked. I don't know what Virtus Pro needs to do to to stop this, to, to prevent themselves from losing this first series in a 2 0. I wonder if it might be worth taking a little bit more of an aggressive play. Because the thing is that they're starting to become a little bit predictable. Like, where we could see the positions that were being checked by Trick, and they seem to know where it's going. And, well, there's the aggression that I was talking about. Snatchy just going to go right up through, snacks through the smoke, also picks off Hunden, leaves it down. Well, now just the two players left. Acor and Roche trying to do something in this round. VP just had enough of taking these individual fights and have got aggressive and fought together and managed to get themselves a very strong position in this round. Well, I was saying, I don't know what they need to do. Just just do that. Every <laughs> round of Virtus.pro. Just do what you just did. Just headshot everyone. Exactly. Just spray through smokes and get headshots. Thing is, in mo most normal games, I would say, all right, this should be a done round for Virtus Pro, but I don't know just yet. With what we've seen come out of Trick's sleeves, they're still going to have a chance, though. I think Snatchy might be... Did he just try and shoot him through the wall? I don't know. Because that's what that looked like. There was a bullet that came and Snatchy just moved over. Because <laughs> he was like, I don't want to get hit by this. This should be an easy kill, but the boost is actually quite smart. Gives a target that Snatchy's not going to be expecting. The problem now, though, is that all the information's there. Like All Snatchy has to do is buy time. He may be tagged low, but the rest of the team are going to be available to help him out. And with 25 seconds left on the clock, they're pretty much boxed in. If, if Trick yeah. managed to win this round, then VP have, have got to take a long, hard look at themselves. Either way, smart play by VP to not push anywhere and just keep them boxed, as you mentioned. Time is running out, so it looks like they're going to try to save these weapons. And Virtus Pro with not much money besides for at 5.1k. It's not yet 4.7. I think they're just going to let them have this. But Virtus.pro take the round nonetheless. And that's something that I think they really need to do mentality-wise for the team, considering how, uh, how unfortunate this half has been. You can see the streak there. Five rounds back-to-back -back for Tricked, followed up by one loss and two straight. Yeah, still but leading the way. The thing is, that round they won... There was some, some aspect of randomness to it. Like, Snacks hit a headshot, there was smoke. Obviously, yeah. this kind of level of play, randomness is something you can argue well, about, it, but... It's something that's very difficult to recreate. Exactly. Like, and then Snatchy hitting the shot as well. He got dinked up for his troubles, pushing out towards red, but you can't depend on players to get opening shots like that every time to give yourself such a massive lead. I don't know. I think you can depend on Bubsky to do it, because it just <laughs> seems to be ridiculous at this point. Like, the amount of initial duels that Veggie has lost... I, I don't, I don't even true. want to look at the stat. Like, yeah. it is, it's been ridiculous, and I love it. They love setting up Acor. Just give him the chance to hit the shot. And, well, I sort of mentioned that one shot that he missed. Since then, it's been none. Like, he's missed nothing. And you almost have to look at this round already and wonder if Virtus Pro are going to be falling into a save because they've lost the B side completely. Like, it, it just seems to be the case where one or two kills goes the opposite way and they are just into a save. And um, I, I don't really blame them in a lot of these scenarios. Like, this is a three versus five. They do have a lot of money, down. though, Tom, at least. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the other thing you have to start questioning, though, is when when does it get to the point where uh -oh. there's no point to save anymore? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> there's a reason you don't shoot on ladders, but he gets away with it. He gets away with it. That's fine. Upgrades to an AK. We, we can look past that and pretend it never happened. Well, that Jason does not look happy about that. Just, if he if he died there, I just would have been so sad. I would have been so sad because I think I'm a bad enough player that I know exactly what's going through his head and the feeling that you get when you're on a ladder and so, you just so can't get So basically, what you're saying is you would have died in that scenario. I'd 100 percent would have died. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Either way, though, Trick now up eight rounds on T side of Nuke, five for Virtus Pro. Snatchy's still with the AWP. He's been, I, I think you mentioned this before, but he's been relatively quiet this, this yeah. whole half so far. Well, I, I want to mention something here, which is not necessarily a dig, but they're winning 8-5, and Hunden has zero kills. 
Like, that's ridiculous. Like, that means the other, other four players are just performing incredibly well. Now, of course, he is the one calling, but there's a line. And to be 8-5 to be up and him not to have a kill is, is fairly impressive. He's making me feel like I can maybe play a professional counter strike. <laughs> well, except other than the fact that I, I, you a thousand can't times call. smarter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can call. I just they won't be very good. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, hey, if he's if he's just being, basically being the puppet master and telling them where to go and what to do, and yeah. if they're able to hit the shots, then. Well, Bub, I, it, I don't think he can really say too much at this point because every round now, Bubski just seems to be getting an opening kill. That's, again, another round in a row where he's just getting these picks for the team. And, and the second Virtus Pro lose a player, it just seems like their defense falls apart. Like, it turns into just one player trying to take a duel, losing it. Like, I, the amount of rounds even where you've seen Bubski get the opening kill and then Akel get the second kill, I, I think that's happened at least three or four times. So... It has just been ridiculous from these two players. And, well, again, like, what do you even do here? There's no point saving because you have more money than you could ever really lose. But a two versus five and now a 1v4, good luck. Let me let me ask you something, Tom. Like, that's something I kind of want to talk about. From my understanding, like, as of late, like, in-game leading and not being able to put up decent numbers in terms of kills is not acceptable anymore at the, the very top level of Counter-Strike. Yeah. Do you think something like that, because we were obviously casting uh, alternate attacks yesterday over in Amsterdam, and we had a, a player there, a dude, who typically doesn't get many kills, but he's the caller for the team. Do you think that's what separates a lot of, like, uh, a lot of the mid-tier teams from the top teams, is having an in-game leader who can also frag, besides, obviously, a lot of other uh, potential things? I don't know. I, I think if you have players who are good enough to pick up the slack, then it, it's not so much of a problem. But I, I do think it's much more plausible at the lower tier of Counter-Strike to have someone who is not necessarily there for fragging reasons, just mm -hmm. because a lot of the players at that level are a lot younger. So they're not going to have that sort of experience with calling. So you have a, a sort of real need for somebody who is going to be able to give you that like experience. A strong leader. And, yeah, and, and help grow the team. And then the likelihood is some of those players will move on into bigger and better rosters. And that's why, like, in-game leaders, like young in-game leaders, are some of the most valuable players within the whole of Counter-Strike. Like, it, it, that's why you see teams like Na'Vi, like Zeus was on there for so long, because in all honesty, like, who are you going to replace him with? It took Boomage, who was actually in-game leading for a while, for them to finally go, okay, well, now we think we actually have someone who could in-game lead and play to a decent level. So, and it, it's happened throughout Counter-Strike. And you also see teams that then try and replace the in-game leader, and that goes just as badly. Yeah. Oh, sticking it badly, that fire pushes fear directly out. And again, tricked, just systematically able to get control around the map. Oh. So on cue the Jaws theme. I don't think he was even spotted coming down here. No. This could be crucial for Trick's success in this round. Yeah, the, it, it does seem to be a, a skill that Bobski definitely has. Is He's so good at just getting into the most irritating possible positions. Taking that control. Oh, that was a little bit close. And that's a decent timing for Fur, but unfortunately... He's gone down, and now we sit in what is looking like it's going to be a 10-5. Two orbs trying to retake. It is not happening. Snacks left into a one versus four. And he just doesn't even have the time. 25 seconds left on the clock. No kit available to him. Acor is going to miss a shot, but it doesn't really matter. And he gets the no scope anyway. A dominating T half coming out from the guys. 17 for Shush. 14 for Bubski. Acor, who was quiet, honestly, he was relatively quiet for a majority of the game so far. Still ending at 11 and 7. And yes, we'll talk about it. He did, didn't even get killed. He didn't 0 need to. and 12. Yeah, he didn't need to. Imagine, getting, like, that, like, this is the worst thing about this. VP won the pistol and the two conversion rounds. So that means as actual rounds on their CT side, actual buy rounds, they won two. And that is... And one of those rounds was just like a, a spray through yeah, a smoke and Snatchy up. pushing up really aggressively towards outside. Yeah. A YOLO play, <laughs> pretty much. God, please don't. That, that's all it was. It was just like, let's try something ridiculous. And it did work, but like... Yeah, this is this is dominant, and th this is what the sort of worry was for me after the first map. It was like, okay, even if they have put in a load of work into this map, after things going so badly wrong in the first one, it, like this isn't like the old VP where those guys have been there a million times before mm -hmm. and they can sort of mentally reset every single time and grind things back. Th this is a, a different team. Like, there's only one player really that has been through all of that, and this. 
Oh, a little bit of a trade. Hunden's first kill on the board. There we go. Whoa. And it's just going to be a bloodbath in the lobby. Most he's not able to hit the follow-up shot here. And Shush, well, he's been instrumental in the success of Trick so far. He might have another big opportunity if he, oh, if he didn't make any noise there. He might be able to turn around. But it doesn't matter. He takes on for as a player off towards the left-hand side. Veggie's going to be there. And Veggie needs to hit these shots. And there we go. Does get the first. Peeks down towards the vent anyways. And they do close out the pistol round. But that still worries me, like you mentioned. Out of all the rounds they took, out of five, three of them, well, one of them was from a pistol and two from follow-ups. Only two gun rounds, one. Would you, do you think it's fair to say, by the way, that this this is kind of a battle for second place in the groups between these two teams? Because we have E-Rival, yeah. of course, is another team. Easy for me, previously known as. Well, I, I think if... if like whether you call it harsh or not they're expected to come last like if, if they do anything else then that that's an upset and they've surprised us mm -hmm. then it's a battle between these two teams to get second and then mouse sports the clear favorites yeah. like they're, there's they're the only team to really achieve anything major over the last like few months so yeah of course of course mouse sports are the favorites in this group but okay shush able to get two down to a three on three I think this would just be it, like the, the punch to the gut for Redis Pro if they can't win this round after winning Pistol. Yeah, this is still a pretty heavy investment coming in, at least onto a couple other players. Like, Roj and Hunden pretty much invested everything they have. I wonder if that means there's going to be some sort of double orb, but I guess it's because Shush has actually made a lot of the money back off the two kills he just got. So he did actually fully invest into this round, but he has $1,300 because of the kills he mm -hmm. managed. Even still, Snatchy fairly low. Hunden, I like it. Trying to go for a bit of a wall bang. And Acor still manages to clear up one more. Nice shot from Mihu to finish, but even still. Bit of damage done. We'll see them probably save for another round just to make sure that they can get four rifles plus an AWP. And yeah, maybe we'll see Shush invest into a Deagle or something. Like, I, I don't think that they're going to be going for a double AWP on the CT side of Nuke. I don't really know why they would. Um, but you never know. I'm really impressed. This is actually my first time casting. I think most of the players on Tricked. I think I've cast Hunden ages ago. But I, I'm really impressed with Shush. He's been doing a, a phenomenal job. Really have to respect that, and as well as Bubski. But I mean, to be fair, I also have to give credit to Hunden to make the calls that are needed for them to make the plays that they are. And speaking of the man, he's actually flanking around behind them. If he had a better weapon, we could see potentially different results. Unfortunately, with Bubski going down, it means the push in towards ramp is happening, and that flank was all for naught. But the, the other thing to mention as well is like just looking at that Fragster's roster, like almost every player who's left that team is either like not doing like the two of the players. I would say Dragonfly, we've not really seen anything from, and I think it's Torben as well. Like he was doing in game leading, same. The other three players within that team, Stown has now become a, a great player within Heroic. You've got Refresh, who has become like hot property within the whole scene. Like he's been playing, like obviously with the, the guys at Optic, recently left that team, but we know that individually he's very, very good. And then you've got Bubski, who within that team before, like we always looked at like Stown and Refresh. He leaves this team and now becomes the best player in Tricked. Like it, it is sort of like a, a ridiculous predicament that you almost kind of wish that that team never broke up, or mm -hmm. maybe they just, the, the those three players just joined another roster. But it, it they've been impressive, and, I, and I'm glad that they're succeeding. Yeah, of course. It's always nice to see all the hard work pay off for a lot of these players. We're going to be going into the buy-up now for Tricked. MVP picked up for a core. Haven't really seen much defensive op play out of uh, Virtus Pro on outside, but we're seeing it out of Tricked. Now they almost have him locked in towards the lower push here. You can see no one will be flanking in from secret. You're going to have Hunt in there to watch the retreat if they go there. So actually a player on the Redis Pro side watching outside. And okay. Hmm. Well, if Snacks can do it, I guess Bubski can too. He's looking for the follow-up shot as well. Not able to hit that shot, unfortunately. Down to a four on three in favor of Tricked. Yeah, at least some map control taken by Virtus Pro. Like there's a, some potential for them, but it's... Where they actually wrap around to, Shush has got into position ready and waiting. They knew where Bobski was, but it's actually Shush to go down. They've got themselves back into this round. Bomb possibly going to be planted. They're a little bit wary about 
Bobski running around the side and oh, gets a little bit lucky there, Snatchy. He's been stuck in by his teammate. They're going to have to close the door and run back around. And Bobski goes for the pre-fire. Acor in the meantime finds another and Veggie's left alone. A couple of low players. He hits the first shot. Under goes down the second for Veggie as well. But the third is not going to be there. Bobski running around the map, repositioning, I think, about four times to take different battles. And eventually, he's the one to close out the round. Three I love kills. the Molotov into the side room. Then he runs back around, expecting to come through the door to get yeah. out and just catch them perfectly. Such a smart play out of this player. Yeah, and then he goes back up to the control room as well to take the next battle versus it's the like other player. playing whack-a-mole against yeah. them. It's so they never, yeah, they never know where he's going to come out. That shot there, though, that was... Amazing play. And you saw Snacks again going for the lurk on outside, trying to cut off any sort of flank from coming in, but it didn't seem to really matter. I mean, Veggie, we talked about him on the CT side inside of Hut. He was he was struggling. He was getting caught, caught quite a few times, but we've seen some good plays out of him his, uh, so far on the terrorist side. Yeah, the problem is now, though, that that round was so close that it actually leaves Tricked in a worse position than they were in in the last round. So you do have the op still, so Acor's going to have that at least. Hunden and Rose will be left with a Fama. Shush, who's been the top fragger so far in this match, is left on an MP7. And then, okay, sure, you got Bubski with his uh, full loadout. But the fact that it's pretty much weak across the board, sure, you've got a MAC-10 onto Snatchy, but to be honest, on Nuke, I don't even think that's that much of a detriment. You can have him sort of run around the outside or you see sometimes going down into the ladder room and his job is pretty much just to be a distraction, take map control and just be irritating around different portions of the map. <laughs> well, he is, however, dead, though. Yeah, he was trying to be a distraction, but Akor is more than happy to add one more notch to his kill count. Roche. Okay, what? Did, oh what? my god. Do they just think he like went down <laughs> then, I guess? No, that was Phil. Just used the smoke to his advantage. And that, that almost seemed like a last-ditch effort from Virtus Pro. Just trying to rush through a smoke onto the site. Definitely didn't go anywhere. And you just sort of look at some of the faces on the Virtus Pro side. I, I think they know that this is not going the way they were hoping. Me, who looks, well, fairly unhappy. Well, we're going into now the next round, round 21. And Vitus Pro really have no weapons to use, unfortunately, for them. Just a couple of pistols. They do have two flashbangs, though, for snacks. That's if they can get towards Secret. Core just barely missing the shot there through the smoke. And again, oh, nice little transfer. Hey, you know he had zero kills in you know, the first half? He has he's, a nice he's little just, transfer to three. He's just more than doubled his kills in one round. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hate on it because, like, that's the numbers I put up when I play, so. And Snacks by himself. Yeah, he's just going to fall and trick. Get themselves one step closer, one round closer to closing out this match and going up 1-0 to zero in the group stage. So I have Mouse Sports up against E-Rival as our second match to come up today. We have four best of threes for you. It's going to be a long day of Counter-Strike action for you all to watch at home. Yeah, it also means if you if you don't like me and Jason, then well, you're, you're absolutely screwed. screwed. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get a choice. But uh, yeah, Anders and Moses will be here for the playoff stage starting on Saturday. You can rejoice. Yep. As as will we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not for the same reasons, but <laughs> there we go. This is still some opportunities for Virtus Pro, but it, it, it's definitely getting to the stage where. You need some of your players to start stepping up. Now, we, we've seen at least some moments coming out from a few of the players, like Snack stepping up, or there was the, the attempted round from Veggie not too long ago, but definitely not the sort of star power that we expect to see from the likes of Virtus Pro. Well, just, just trying to get in the faces of this VP side. Definitely not playing with any level of fear. Quite a bit of map control while he's added the Molotovs while placed, but they push into him. He's not going to be able to find a frag, but a lot of information gathered. Incendiary going to go down from Hunden, but he can't really stop the push. Oh, oh. Snatchy took a lot of yeah. damage there. And no kills coming through out of Tricked, but the damage oh, has been no. done. And Roge gets a spray down onto two. He's playing back a site, looking for the third as well. Potentially going to have a fourth there off to the side. If he can just hit these shots, but they've just been completely halted. A core picks up a kill. And just like that, Virtus Pro, even with the man advantage, have fallen onto the entry and towards the lower site. 
Trick now on 14. Yeah, and actually, I think it was just like a couple of rounds ago, Roche was sat on, I think, six kills. Like, he was only a little bit above Hunden. He's now up to 13, and that is purely off the base of a couple of big plays. I think that that's a big worry for Virtus Pro, because you already had to try and deal with Bobski and Shush, who are both now sat on 21 kills. Acor's been hitting his shots he's just whenever solid. he's been needed. Yeah, super yeah. solid. And now if Roche starts to step up, well, that's it. They're done. And then imagine if Hunted starts to step up. Oh, yeah, he got a triple. <laughs> a triple in an eco round. That's him stepping up. And we see it like a completely different style too. I mean, of having Bubsky on your team for tricks. A lot of focus was take down that squeaky door every round. Always have that that little play, that potential play to use against Virtus Pro. Where on the other hand, VP haven't really dropped the door. They're using it more as a defensive tool instead of an offensive tool that Trick has. Smoke's coming down on towards the outsides. And it looks like Virtus Pro are going to snake their way through. I like the sort of strategy in a pistol round. They're trying to gain themselves some space. A few different smokes thrown to isolate them oh off. My God. Oh, that is just unlucky. Hunden's going to burn one down a split second later, and they may have been able to escape. Nice shot from me, who at least, but it doesn't really matter in the grand scale of things. And they are one round away from 2 0 ing Virtus Pro. Quite a bit better than they did in July, where we had a nice close series between these two teams ending on train in overtime. Instead, they're looking for that 2-0. Again, practice makes perfect of Trick to have put in the practice. This is their 101st map in three months that they played. It's kind of disgusting. I don't, I, I don't know if there's many teams that could have more than that. Yeah. I think Virtus Pro are about 30. Yeah, 39 to 100, or 41 to 101 between the two teams. But again, it's not over just yet. We still see a potential chance coming through for Virtus Pro, but if I were to be honest, it looks like Trick do have their number on this map in this series. Yeah, they're like they'd have to have a big fall from Grace, but we did see it in the last map with VP 13 and 5 up, very close to finishing off the game. So maybe they can channel their inner trick and try and turn things back. Bobski already low, but. Snacks has taken the same amount. In the meantime, nice shot from Snatchy, though. That'll be the opening back into this round. Give them the start that they wanted. We haven't seen too much from him in a while, so if he can sort of breathe some life into this VP side, there might be an opportunity here. We'll have a 50 seconds left, and they're still sort of just lurking outside of this A site for now. They've taken ramp control at least, but... You can see the CT side just being a little bit more patient and waiting for people to push into their angle. Is it just me, or does it feel like even though Virtus Pro have that first kill, they still haven't taken control of the map fully? It's like when we saw Trick do this, they were like already in lower, they're already like moving into their next stage of their plan. Whereas Virtus Pro, it's like we get the kill and then it's still, well, now what do we do? Oh my gosh, oh. just gets in behind him, gets a quick two piece. Roge gonna come in as well, and just like that, the five on two turns into a two on two. The timing, oh Roach actually turns around and hits the headshot, and now they're just defusing the bomb. This has to be the run quickly, and Snacks is not close enough. How have they managed to turn that? Was that a 2v5? That was a 2v5. And Shush takes down two from upper. Roach comes in big with a nice turnaround. And Trick pull off the 2-0 up against Virtus Pro. Bettering than the last time they met back in July. But what a game, honestly. Shush playing phenomenal. Bubski as well, really showing what he can do in towards events. Rose really stepped up towards the end. Hunting getting a triple kill on the on the on the eco. Gotta give him credit for that. No. But still, well done by Trick, honestly. That that is just crazy though, the fact that you can have a player in the first half get zero kills and win the half 10-5. Like that that's yeah. that's just insane it shows how good the rest of the team have actually been playing like the younger players really showing their stuff and wow they've, they've managed to get themselves that first victory on the board that's the team that they want to be beating as well i think like they're likely to face in the winners match mouse sports would be very surprised if we see anything else yeah. and i wonder how that map pool is going to break down i wonder if they're going to still continue to play because that should be the last match we have of today but that's enough from us here on the desk let's head back to say to kiss and the boys and the boys the children well actually not to your dad but he's a child Jacob, I I'm can, looking at you. If you ask my wife, I'm a child too. So, well, they, uh, I could imagine. Yeah, I believe oh, it. 
just well, we're all shout children. outs we're back all, home. We're all talking about video games and playing video games <laughs> yeah. for a living. So I think we're all children in some ways, and that's a beautiful Especially thing. Especially you. More beautiful, thank you, Jacob, than the game we just saw from Virtus Pro. <laughs> that was a bit underwhelming for Nuke. Started CT side, mm -hmm. still couldn't get much going. Trick, dominant throughout. Yeah, I mean, you win both pistol rounds, you, you kind of set up for having an opportunity to win. Um, but th the countless times that VP just managed to lose man advantages was a little dreadful. I well, mean, that last round there being a testament to the cost, a two on five. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> it, yeah. It's rough. I think that was a perfect showcase of what Virtus Pro did in this game, which was absolutely nothing whatsoever. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> This guy's savage <laughs> today. Another I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. The way, and like, by the way. Obviously, they should have won Mirage, right? That's that's a no-brainer. You're leading 13 to 5. You're coming into Nuke, and you know that's the map pick of Tricked. You know that's the only way they're going to go when you're not banning Nuke as the first map, and then you're not more prepared, and then you don't have a better idea of how to deal with Tricked. It's not okay. I mean, Hunton went 0, 2, and 12 in the first half, and they still managed to win that first half. T-sided Nuke 10 to 5. That's outrageous. You have, you're literally playing four against five, and yeah. you're still not able to pick up CT rounds. <laughs> and just to point out, Hunden only had 19 kills throughout the whole series. He actually it's finishes enough. on the bottom. Yeah. It is enough, apparently, because Bubski looked amazing, 52 and 30. And Shush, I think, was more the clutch player of the two. Maybe less impact in the early rounds, but incredible performance again on Nuke, as well as what I pointed out on Mirage. Yeah, I'm, if you go through the, ma the rounds that VP managed to win at that, uh, in that Nuke, um, it, there was mostly like these weird rounds where they were doing all aggressive pushes on yard, getting kills through smokes and gimmicky things that you just cannot replicate one after round, right? Sure. So uh, definitely a lot of work for them to be doing if they want to have any chance of going further in this tournament. You've got to give some credit to Trick as well, right? We, first map was so Aiko, he went nine, or sorry, he went eight for nine in the opening duels. This time around, he was not needed to do the same with the AWP. This time around, it was Bobski, he went seven for nine. So they have two players to play off in terms of opening up the duels or opening up the maps. And I think that's a strength towards this trick lineup. They're not relying on one guy. They're not relying on, you know, a, a piece of the, the team that has to step up every game mm -hmm. in order to win. They are a team. They are a unit. And that's why Hunton gets away with zero kills in the first half. Well, and they still win the half 10 to and, 5. And just to, to point that out as well, Roge was the lowest at 35 and 29, other than Hunton. Sure. As I mentioned, on 19 <laughs> kills. Just exclude He had 35 <laughs> kills, though. And that's the highest that was available on Virtus Pro throughout both maps. That was Snatchy. So when all four of the other players outperform the other team, yeah, you're going to have a quick 2-0. Virtus Pro, that's a bit of a worry. It's a great team team performance, sorry, from, from Trick Rad, and this is where we want them to be. This is a team that has been climbing as of lately. It's a, I think they're ranked 24th or 25th right now in the world, you know, and I think that's a fair ranking in the sense of where they are. This is uh, this is a major event for them, right? This mm -hmm. is where Trick want to make the mark in the scene. This is where they want to break through, potentially beat a mouse board, beat an MIBR, yes. beat an NIP who's not in a top shape, so it's a good sign. For when you're in sort of that 20th to 40th position, a lot of that has to do with some of the teams ahead of you, sort of in the teens, because it, it has to do with depreciation of value points and how often you play. Sure. So you could argue they might even be higher than that. We just don't get to see them enough. Obviously, they didn't make it through the minor, and therefore That's, we didn't get to see them yeah. in that cycle. But on the other side, Virtus Pro is like 90th, <laughs> right? Well, and it's well, the same yeah. thing. We don't see them enough. Yeah, it's true. Right. It's tough There's to be. A reason for that. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's tough to be in that. You know, you know, 40th in the world type of a situation when you have so many tournaments and leagues you're playing online consistently. I mean, you're getting a lot of games, right? But the scheduling is going to get really tedious very, very soon. Mm. So like Jacob was saying, this is like the, the World Cup for, for Tricked, right? This is their opportunity to really showcase that they deserve more opportunities like this. Well, and if you look at the format, it's two groups, best of threes. It's similar to that of a DreamHack Open. Sure, and sure. we've seen a number of teams springboard themselves through those DreamHacks, including Avangar, which has most recently done it. But other teams that have won to start their campaigns, Mouse Sports this year won a DreamHack Open. Ents, you guys won Gambit one last 2017. year. Gambit 2017. Gambit <laughs> 2017 went on to win the major. So if events like this sure. of this format this is a great chance for them to showcase themselves it's the perfect conditions right because they're also facing teams right now who are not playing up to their best MIBR just had a rush to change they're not really feeling it just yet could be the event that turns it around for them NIP we know how big of a mess that is right now another great team they could potentially beat claim some, some points right there move up in the rankings then you have the big favorite in mouse sports they are looking solid so that's obviously going to be a rough one but there's plenty of opportunity for teams like yep. Virtus Pro and Trick to come in here and actually make results and that's why I'm so disappointed in Virtus Pro they should be able to perform better than this. Well, that's uh, so presumably, if we're going to go along with Mouse Sports, the theme of them being the favorites, they should beat E Rivals, and therefore you get Virtus Pro E Rivals. They have to win that, surely. I mean, where do they go from here? This is, a, this is not a confidence-inducing performance. Cuban's been behind them forever. He's not going to be pleased with that. 
No, definitely not. I mean, uh, you, you manage to put yourself in advantageous situations so many times like you did in this game. You're not able to capitalize. That comes down to them just collapsing team-wise. Communication not working. People are individually making wrong mis mistakes. They're overextending their stay. They're peeking through smokes. We saw that a lot of times. Um, those are the kind of things you have to be able to iron out. Otherwise, you have no chance of winning any games. The level of Counter-Strike Virtus Pro displays today was not enough even to, to scare Tricked. And Tricked is by no means a top team. So that's simply not good enough. Especially when they had the massive lead at 13-5. If you were going to see them crumble, that was going to be it. So Tricked prevail. A well-done performance by them. 2-0. They'll sit at the top of the bracket or at least top of their respective group. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we continue on the action with our next matchup, which is, if I scroll through... It was right there. E-Rivals versus Mouse Sports. I thought that was it, but I just wanted to confirm, you know, make sure Fair we enough, don't give any right. misinformation. Take, take your time. I will. You know what? I might. I might take more time. I'm not. We're going to take time to go to a break. We'll be back in just a second with more from V4 in Budapest.